Welcome back, everyone, to Gunter's Universe. How is it going? It's a great crowd Woo! here. Woo! Yeah. Wow, what a week so far, huh? E3. So awesome. I've seen some huge announcements made at the Electronic Entertainment Expo this week. We've got, well, we've got one right now. We're supposed to have two of the VR spies, but uh, Caleb is off getting some uh, refreshments at the store or something like that. But yes, he'll be here soon. We'll have two VR spies with us tonight to share their opinions, their insights. It's going to be a super fun show. So let's dive right in with me tonight. To help me bring the fun is VR Gamer Dude. Yeah! What's going on, on man? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh, and uh, soon, hopefully, Reality Check VR will be with us. And, of course, we have Bob, a.k.a. Cause and Effects, with us. He's my co-host. Hello. And K-Dog, he's on my left. He's videotaping all this. K-Dog, what's up, brother? <laughs> Not too much, man. <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> VR Gamer Dude, your channel is, well, VR Gamer Dude on YouTube. Your Twitter is also the same thing, VR Gamer Dude. Everybody should go there, subscribe, follow. I've been hanging a long time in VR chat. VR chat's no stranger to you. Um, and you got into learning Unity here in VR chat. We were just hanging out in your first world, so... It's pretty sweet, dude. Yeah, thanks, pretty man. I, I I gotta say, it's it's coming in here. You know, you know what propelled me to do that? Business sim. That avatar right there that K Dog sporting. It's I, I didn't want to be business sim <laughs> anymore. So I was like, I saw everybody and they had all these great avatars and all these game characters and yeah, and yeah. I was like, God, how do I do that? And and it really made me want to learn Unity. Um, and a couple of tutorials later, I had, I had my avatar. I was sporting my C-3PO that I normally wear. Now, tonight I'm wearing Captain Kirk in honor of the big announcement of Star Trek Bridge Crew from uh, yeah. E3. Very excited about that, and I'm sure we'll talk Definitely a lot about that later. About that. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, and then that, that spawned into actually making the world hey. that we were just kind of traipsing around in. So. Hey, look. There's a reality check here. He just ducked away. He just went away. <laughs> hey, you're on the show, buddy. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> no hiding from us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, dude, on your uh, Twitter it says you're a tech specialist. When you yeah. describe yourself as a tech specialist, what do you mean? Well, I actually, that's what I do in real life. Um, I'm a uh, technical specialist and technology buyer for the Missouri State University Bookstore. So basically, I maintain oh, all of their computer systems, and, uh, you know, uh, I deal with, like, printers and office problems and, you know, sure. just general IT stuff. And then I, I actually buy all of the technology for the students. So, you know, basically they come in to buy software and computers and flash drives and gadgets and whatnot. And, well, I'm the guy that has to go out and procure all that for them. Nice. That's a great job. Do something similar. And did your favorite beer is Rolling Rock. Actually uh, yeah, yeah, actually it is. I've got one in my hand right now. Uh, <laughs> cool, and uh, again, Caleb, Caleb, are you out there? Reality check. Come back to virtual reality. We he's, love he's, you. Standing, he's standing in the audience. He's behind you. Caleb. Hey. No, I'm not. Buddy. No, I'm not. Hey, buddy. you got to sit in this uh -huh. chair. We saved I don't know how to nice sit. Warm. Come on, Caleb, you get to sit in the big boy chairs tonight. Come on. I don't know how to... What is this game? Is this real life? We'll help you. <laughs> I, first time Reality Check came here, uh, I don't know what episode it was. It's probably six months ago. Episode four. episode four. Episode it four. It was episode four. Was yes. Really? No, oh, maybe it was crap. episode three. It was three. It was, uh, like maybe a it was three. Ago. Yeah. 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 That's a year ago. Wow. I love watching that <sighs> video where he stumbles here. down here and goes, hey, what are y'all doing? What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> I know. Is something awesome. going on? Is this recorded? Is this might be recorded. Is this live? Is somebody teaching something here? Is this, a, is this education? Hey, hey, be nice now. <laughs> so, how do I oh, sit no, in this awesome. exquisite chair? Okay, Are you what, in a Rift you or a Vive? On? He's on a Rift. Well, I'm now in the Rift. I was in the Vive version, but it, it you can't see my hands moving, so... Okay, so... Probably your avatar, maybe. Right, yeah. use your mouse yeah, right we'll click on the out, chair. Right. And then no, you see, like, a little green thingy. And then left click. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Oh, Xbox. Just there you go. <laughs> Call no, my head's in the wrong spot. That's, all. That's fine. Head's going to be in the wrong spot. We're going to 
We're all right with that. At least can you do I do I do I at least look like my head's in the right spot? No, yeah. you do. You do, man. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay, so it, it doesn't look weird. Look okay, you cool, look, you man. Look perfect. Oh, you guys stop. Glad to be here. Good to see all of you guys and uh, a lot of familiar names in the audience, of course. A lot, a lot of good friends and here. A lot of good friends here, yeah. for sure. Um, I have one. Yeah, the big question tonight. The big question is, what did you get at the store? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can talk about that. No. Whoa. Um, okay. I got I got right. uh, stuff Over. for pizza. Um, I got large uh, crust for pizzas, and you know, yeah, hamburger, and you know, herbs. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was gonna. It's gonna be a really good pizza. I'm hungry. I am so yeah. coming to your house for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> both of you live in the same neck of the woods, right? You're both you're still in Missouri, right? Yeah, he uh, sometimes stalks me every once in a while. I'll look out the window, and he's just there. I do. <laughs> I just show up at his house, you know. Yeah, we yep, both yep. we both live in uh, in southern Missouri, and uh, it, you know, the funny thing is, is before we started VR Spies, and I had just started my channel, and I, you know, I was kind of reaching out to people who might be in the local area. I didn't even know that Caleb lived in my same town, um, and ironically, Billy, uh, pretty neat VR, also lived right here in Springfield, and all three of us are running VR only channels. You know, it, yeah, what's small in the world. water up there? I don't know, man. I don't. I really don't know what it is. All I know is, uh, I, I saw actually the first time I saw VR Gamer Dude was he uh, had uploaded a video of being in Gunter's universe, watching uh, you guys have an after party, having bodies fall from the sky. Bodies and I falling was like, from hey, the sky. Who, who is this other guy who's trying to make VR chat videos? You know, I was like, I need to see this guy. So uh, yeah, it was it's interesting. And uh, as far as Billy goes, I, I work production here in town, so we do a lot of uh, we do concerts, we do you know small events, large events, we do some of the big plays like Wicked and and uh, whatnot. But uh, basically, I needed some extra help, and uh, I had a friend at work who was like, Hey, this guy named Billy, you should ask him if he needs to work stagehand stuff. Plus, he's got one of those virtual reality headsets that you always talk about. So I was like, I will definitely call him. Uh, that's how I met Billy, and he just came working with me, and uh, we just did a little bit of freelance, and from there we started hanging out in the VR spectrum, and obviously, yeah, I mean, I we're drinking the same water too, so who knows what's in it. But. Well, what you need to be doing is drinking Rolling Rocks. You're both drinking the same Ooh. beer. There you go. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Rolling Rock tastes awful. Yeah, it says you. Take it, Don. <laughs> no. Yeah, all right, I'll take it. No, I, it's I, so, cheap. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, it's eight bucks a, si a twelve pack. So you I'm know, down you with some cheap beer, man. I got you, dude. I'm over go, all man. the hops I'll, I'll, and micro breweries and just. I'll do the I don't PBR know what I'm about I to drink to. when I when I order a paradise for beer from Valhalla. I don't know what that is. Anyways, uh, all those funky names. So reality check and VR game do predominant VR YouTube reviewers. I love your guys' videos. Reality check. You're developing. You're not. You're not just. You know, doing one thing or two things. You're doing all kinds of things. One of those things is starting to develop. Uh, did you receive some touch controllers? Is that true? Ah, uh, you know, I. I can you I, talk I, about I, that? I, I can't. I can talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I, I can, I can say. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to talk about stuff that's public, which is, you know, for the most part, everything. I mean, there's not a whole lot that's not public, other than there's a whole lot of misinformation, and, and you know, you got fanboys on both fences calling other people fanboys and getting upset at this and that. And, and the fact of the matter is, I, I love, I love playing with this stuff. I love all of it. Um, I've gotten to try the HTC Vive. I've gotten to try the Oculus CV1. I've tried the touch controllers. I've got years of experience with the DK2. And, and you know what? It's all good, good stuff. It's great hardware. Um, but here, one thing I'll say very quickly, uh, I personally think the DK2 was the best headset that there was, considering when it came out and the price that it was and how much you could do with it even now, that thing still has long-lasting value. Um, there's no doubt the CV1 and the, and the Vive look so much better, um, but, you know, they're, they're twice as much money, and uh, they just have a, a whole lot of, uh, I guess, expectation that comes with them, whereas that thing did not, and it just yeah. it still, you know, can do everything. So, um, having said all that, uh, yeah, playing right now with the touch controllers is one of the most fun things that, that I've been able to do. Um, I would uh, love to have a Vive uh, to be able to play with that as well and develop with it. Unfortunately, I do not, but everything that I'm creating will be, of course, accessible to play with the Vive as well, because uh, anybody that's been playing with Unity knows it's so easy to jump in and uh, to import your Unity SDK, I'm sorry, the, the Steam SDK into your Unity project. Um, and of course, uh, with Oculus, it is a whole different SDK, but it's not very difficult to match things up. So um, I think most developers out there are going to have support for each thing, regardless of what uh, Oculus tries to do with, uh, you know, keeping exclusives. Um, and, and yeah, I'm sure we're going to go more into that here in a moment. So 
Um, but no, it, it's a lot of fun. I'm doing I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. I, I, I've got the back transducer that I'm still trying to do the back attack. I've got a few games that I'm working on titles. I'm trying to do the reviews for the videos. And hey, I've got a job and a wife. So <laughs> it's it's life, man. It's life. Awesome. Keep busy. Good. Uh, sweet. Uh, you can find you, uh, Caleb's and Reality Check VR's YouTube channel at Chubby E. E B B Y. <laughs> Not Chubby. E. Cubby. What is it? Oh, it's Cubby. <laughs> See, uh, you can you guys... can you can do a you can do YouTube dot com slash reality check VR eighty eight right or you can just oh, yeah. you can do that? Cubby E C U B B Y E. When I first started playing video games, when I was like ten years old, my nickname was Cubby, right? Caleb Cubby, right? My mom, my dad, Aww, right? So All right, right. So I used to always do the tag Cubby. So if you ever played Xbox Live or played Halo, I was Cubby E for like ten years online. And uh, we were the, you know, first level 50 clan. That, that name was out there, but n nobody cares. Um, but yeah, when I started playing VR stuff, we, we actually, what it was, was uh, I was uploading, or, yeah, I was uploading Mazer Quest onto a few different VR sites. And they asked me, they said, what is your username? And I thought right then, okay, what username am I going to come up with? I want it to be cool. I want it to be, you know, something that, that fits me, that I like, and, you know, you know, just the phrase, you know, you need a reality check is something that is very common in my life. People used to say it all the time. My parents said it all the time. So I liked that. I liked how it kind of related to virtual reality. And, and of course, I looked it up online. And the only thing I saw online that used it was uh, there are several GameStop videos that use the reality check tagline. But, you know, I'm like, hey, that's not a person. It's not, it's not a actual brand of a guy. So I'm going to go ahead and use that tag. And that's how that name came about. So now you know. And it's also your Twitter name. So if people want to find you, they can. Find it reality check VR on Twitter. If you type in reality check VR and YouTube and Google, you're going to get a page. So it's not hard to find you. You're also part of the VR Spies team. Not everybody on the team could represent tonight. Some people are across the pond and it's about 3 a.m. or across half of the world and still not convenient uh, for immersive gamer. He's moving and all kinds of busy stuff. So I do want to give a shout out to the rest of the team VR Gaming Evolve, Immersive Gamer 83. Game Hard 4.0, pretty neat VR, and UK Rifter. But we do have something special at the end of the show from UK Rifter, so y'all want to stay tuned in that. He's oh awesome. yeah, right on. made something special for the talk tonight. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, man, that's awesome. All right, let's talk some news. Some E3. Bob's gonna kick things off. He's co-host. He's gonna run the news here. What's first up in the news, Bob? All right, so tonight's going to be a little bit different. Uh, instead of our normal news rundown and, and interview, we'll mostly be covering the E3 VR announcements. Uh, but first up, uh, some non-E3 news. Uh, Valve Destination 2 for Source 2 Engine is now available via early access on Steam. Destination Workshop now tools let you create, share, well. and explore mm -hmm. both Whoops. real and imaginary places in v VR. This is a beta release of a set of content creation tools that users can use to construct worlds and share them in the Destinations Workshop, and explore them with the included Destinations Viewer. The Destinations Viewer Workshop tools include the Source Tool Source Two tool set used internally at Valve, uh -huh. several example destinations created with photogrammetry. An example map that users can copy and modify, which highlights how to use Source 2 tools to add interactivity to a destination. The destination viewer, where users can browse and explore destinations downloaded from the Steam Workshop. And Destinations works with all headsets supported by OpenVR, and it supports both motion track controllers and X input controllers. Excellent. Has anybody uh, tried Destinations around the table here? Yeah, Destinations is yeah, great. Started. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Destinations is one of those. It's basically, if you've played the lab in uh, in uh, Steam Steam VR, then you you would have some idea of what this is when you jump into the photogrammetry levels that allow you to travel to the different fields or Paris or um, they're very they're lifelike you know, situations or areas that were you know created by using photos. So. Um, and it's actually funny that we're talking about that now. I have been working on a video for, oh, about a day now. Um, I'm, it'll come out tomorrow, hopefully, um, just showing some photogrammetry uh, steps and how to do it yourself in your home. Um, but anybody that has a, you know, a camera that can take, a, you know, 8 megapixel or better photos can do some pretty good high-resolution models, um, believe it or not, just from your home. 
Um, and yeah, using the destination tools that they've got built into there, um, it's supposed to just be a whole of a lot easier, you know, <laughs> a heck of a lot easier. And, and I personally have not used those tools, so I am interested if anybody here at all has used the tools specifically from Steam. I use Agisoft when I do it myself. So, um, anybody? I mean, the the tools just came out, uh, just were released on last like Thursday or Friday, somewhere around there. Right, so it's, right. it's pretty it's new about a week. Yeah. And I, I tried to jump in, and I, I really actually, here's the one thing, I wanted to play with those, because I, I love photogrammetry, and, and as I said, I've, I've worked on just trying to recreate my room here at home, as well as taking, you know, random stumps from outside, and, and of course, doing things outside with the lighting is so much better. Um, but uh, the one thing for me is that, I, I guess the problem for me with, with introducing myself into that is that when you open up that program, it wants you to put your VR headset on, and uh, I... I, I don't quite understand. I mean, I, I guess I'm, I don't know if you're supposed to edit in the VR headset or, or wh how it works, but um, I, I don't know. I just know it, it, it had me bring up the window for the headset as soon as I double-clicked the tools. So I'm interested to see how it works. All right, so next up we're going to get into the E3 news, and we're going to go in order of the announcements. So first up is best data and it's press conference on Sunday night. So let's take a look at the VR content that they've announced. Well, let's do it. This is awesome. I'm hitting play. Hopefully this is all working on the big now screens. Another treat for I you can over see there it. As well. yes. A chance to experience the latest in virtual reality from Bethesda. Kenny, it look okay to you, buddy? Bethesda. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> looks fantastic. That, were you? Uh, now, the first time to anyone exponent, uh, experienced modern VR uh, was at E3 2012, and if you were there and lucky enough, you may remember getting to play Doom 3 BFG in our booth. Now, at the time, we had solved some of the toughest technology challenges posed by VR, and people were amazed. Since then, we've quietly continued our pioneering work in VR, and tonight, we want you to see and experience what you feel when you put on a headset and play the latest uh, AAA games in the industry. And we have two games for you to experience. The first is the just released Doom. You can take I a wonder. virtual tour of hell. Doom. A unique look so excited. And graphics what? and true next-gen rendering from our id Tech 6 engine. In addition, we think the greatest promise of VR is its ability to immerse players completely into virtual worlds. And that the best game for me into hell will hell, be yeah. first-person open-world RPGs. So we have Fallout 4 for you to play as well. Oh, wow. yeah. Fallout and, 4. And just so you caught that, uh, Doom doesn't actually let you play the, right play the game, but you get to look at the levels in 3D. Boy on your arm, uh, by your side, glad you caught that. I did not. It's pretty incredible. Tonight we're pleased to announce that Fallout 4 will be released in 2017 on the HTC Vive platform. Uh, if you thought yay. survival mode was an intense way to experience Fallout, you ain't This is awesome, right? Yet. Fallout 4. I actually haven't played Fallout 4. I played all Fallout 3. VR where you can didn't pick it up. I didn't have time. I'm glad now because I get to play it in VR next year. YouTube. That's right. That's no. right. Yeah. Check it out. So happy about that. I actually started playing it with Vorpix and right. uh, got, got halfway through the intro and something told me stop. I don't know. Huh. Glad I did. That's, that's funny. Uh, that's the, the really interesting. One thing about that is, is you know, I, I noticed he says this comes out for the headset, the HTC Vive, um, in 2017. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. And 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 like that's one thing that is huge. I'm hearing right now this whole exclusivity thing that's going on. Uh, people don't seem to be too upset about the fact that they're not, you know, marketing theirs towards the Rift at all. Granted, of course, the simple fact is when it comes out on Steam SDK, you'll be able to play it with your Rift. Um, um, of course, the motion controllers. As long as Steam allows the touch controllers to be used in there, we won't have a problem. But uh, as much as people think there's, you know, a solid foundation on that, there really is not an actual uh, any information given on how that's going to work and, and if it will actually work that way. Um, it's all up to Oculus at this point. So, and and I don't know the answer on that at all. They have not told me. Sure. No, I have I have faith, man. I have faith that it's going to be playable on Oculus. All right. Well, and I'll tell you personally, just uh, my opinion on this whole subject, guys, with the E3 games coming out and exclusivity. I personally think it really doesn't matter oh, what shit. game is going to come out. You're it there. Or what. You know, yeah, they're he's going to go there. He's gonna go yeah, there. They're right gonna go to there. it. Totally, totally. First, I, I personally first topic believe. topic hijacked right into exclusivity talk. Okay. <laughs> they, they, 
though I, I, all the games that we want to play, guys, are going to be available on all the headsets, whether you like it or not. All right, we're, we're not going to be stuck away. Um, the simple way that software work, the simple way that software works, um, will make this happen. Um, there are going to be ways to hack this, and unless they were to change the entire tracking system of the Oculus at this point, um, we don't have to worry about that. I can tell you that much. And I know there's enough developers out there working on. Um, games that bring us together even while we're playing VR games. I mean, think about it. While you're in a VR game and having friends join you and jump in, even with the code that's already established, uh, it, things are possible. So uh, just just keep looking forward to the future. But uh, I just I hate all the arguing. You know, it's nothing. None of this is new stuff. This is all old stuff here. So you got to fight for the user. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's true. Exactly. It's absolutely true. But I mean, even Xbox and PlayStation. I mean, it's it's just the same thing going all over again. Uh, but the users are going to prevail. Come on, guys. We're we're gonna we're gonna win this. There's so much cool shit that we have access to now in the future. VR is here. There's so much VR to try. There's obviously going to be a lot more throughout the year. Come Christmas, we're going to be swimming in. I don't have enough time to play all the content there is right now. Not even. Um, not even close. So, I'm certainly still happy. I'll leave all those politics and business stuff to other people to to work out. I do feel I feel something for the indie developers at this point in this situation. But right, and and from a developer standpoint, it. yeah, I mean from a developer standpoint, anybody that's developing a game wants it to be available for everybody because they want the most people to possibly play it, to to get on that bandwagon of enjoying it, of wanting to continue to like that company, um, as well as the fact that it's going to get them more money. So guys, every developer wants it to go for every system. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you're an indie developer and you're having a hard time paying bills or you don't have enough time in the day to work on your game because you're working other jobs, if some company comes along and says, hey, we'll, we'll give you money for it, it's very difficult to say, no, I care so much about you know freedom for everybody that I won't take that money to finish my game. I mean, those people, for the most part, I know a few of the developers, and you know what they're saying is that, hey, if I get a little bit of money for my game, I can build this thing, make a name for myself, and of course, later it can come out for everything, and then I can make more games for other people and other systems. Um, but there's no way that's going to happen if these indie developers don't get some kind of a break. So. Um, be happy for the people that are giving the breaks out there, but uh, at the same time, you know, if, if it's a really big title, like, you know, for example, if something like Fallout 4 came out and they said, we're going to make sure the CV1 does not work on it, you know, people would go crazy about that. And, and you know, I, I, don't, I don't see any big name title ever doing that uh, because that would totally, totally ruin everything. So, Well, and uh, I think... We're, we're I think you know another thing that people aren't taking into consideration is is that we're not talking straight exclusives here. We're talking timed exclusives. So, yeah. you know, it's going to come out on one platform first and you know, okay, so like taking Oculus, they're getting a lot of heat right now. You know, some of these games they funded them, okay? So so they're like Caleb said, they're fostering the development of this game. It, it kind of makes sense that they would want that at least for a small period of time to be on their platform, you know, to bolster those sales, to get that word out there. But they're not saying, hey, you can never put this on Steam. You can never play this on a Vive. It's, it's just they're wanting that, that, that small amount of time to kind of capitalize and return on their investment. Right. And just to just to second the conversation to hopefully finish my point is just to add on to that. And, and even right now, if you have a Vive or a CV1, you're playing everybody's games. And if the games come out exclusively for Oculus and you've got a Vive, guess what? Right now with the Revive tool, you can play it. And no matter how many times they try to block it, guess what, guys? It's software. We're going to unblock it. It's not something that can't be done. So, uh, and uh, and uh, the the big point here, though, everybody's going to be thinking hack is, is the we, we, we don't want to hack things. We want it to be we want it to be you know use easy for the user. You know, and that's obviously agreeable. I completely agree there. It's just not how business works. The world does not work on hey, I hope this works out for me, and hey, I hope that no business is contracts and it's money. And if you don't understand that, you're missing, you know, a big part of the world. I don't like it, but it just is what it is. And I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm just going to wait. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm just going to wait for the games to play the ones that I have. And you know what? There's so many great ones that are on both systems. So there, there's my, there's my two cents on the exclusivity sure. thing. But uh, I, I, I don't like I it. I'm just, I'm not going to cry about it. It's normal. Can I say something real quick? All right. Uh, Absolutely. Sure, Lord John. What's up? Don't don't you think that uh, the companies would be able to make a lot more money if they opened up all of, you know, if their software to all the platforms? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course, but but companies well, might need, like, that, that money up front while they're doing the development. 
No, and, and, and here's the here's one thing I gotta say. Like for example, as Steam. If you're Steam, you're a company. You want to make money. You're bringing the HTC Vive out there, right? And your games can be played on the Oculus or the Steam system. The, the you know the Vive. Um, if you're playing Oculus Home, it does not naturally give Vive users a way to play that. So that right there is the big disconnect. Steam does, Oculus does not. And like you said, wouldn't Oculus want to allow Steam users to, you know, use their Vive on the Oculus Home platform? You would think, because yes, then all of their games could get bought by Steam people. That would make sense. But the, the fact of the matter is, the people who have invested money for the past few years, the people that have put money into Oculus, you know, there's investors and business people, and they want to make sure people buy, you know, CV1s. They want to make sure people buy Oculus headsets. And in their business minds, the only way they can do that is to say, we're going to give only access to the CV1 users. And those people are not PC gamers. Those people are not the developers. You know, those people that are making those decisions are businessmen sitting in offices. And, you know, I don't like it. But the fact of the matter is those businessmen are going to have to see their, you know, their Oculus home sales sit very stagnantly for a long time. And they're going to have to realize that, yes, they need to allow Steam people, they need to allow Vive users to buy those games. And I stand for that. I totally agree with that right there. I do think Oculus Home needs to unlock themselves and be much more like Steam VR. The problem is they've got too much money invested in contracts that do not allow them to do that. And that is why we're so upset. And even people like me that, you know, love the Oculus headset, I'm upset about that myself. Self, very upset. Um, you know, I want fair everybody enough, to be fair playing fair everything. Enough. So, there yeah, it is. yeah. The only thing I keep hearing is, Mr. Lucky, tear down these walls. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. All Sorry, right, let's let's move past this. Uh, there's plenty of this to go read about, participate in, and for sure, and all for of sure. that. Sorry, let's Gunter. talk more about games. That's okay, you're obviously very, very passionate about this. That was some great information to hear. Bob, what's next on our list of games to? Uh, uh, well, we yeah, I think we talked enough about ball. Yeah, so so next um, the next thing that happened was uh, yesterday Monday afternoon, Microsoft announced Project Scorpion, launching late next yeah. year with, uh, which is going to be a new version of the Xbox One, and it's going to have eight cores and six teraflops of performance, which puts it around an Nvidia Titan X level of performance. Uh, after the briefing, Wired Magazine spoke with Xbox head Phil Spencer, who said, quote, Right now, we are not focused on a first-party VR hardware device. He says, He didn't call out any particular headset that might plug into Scorpio, but noted that Microsoft hoped to, quote, enable many hardware manufacturers to make progress there. Ooh. Yeah, that's very yeah, interesting. interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, you it's know, not just I, a, that it's supporting Oculus and it's a big um, deal with them, which you know we thought that could be the case, um, seeing that the Oculus Rift comes with an Xbox controller um, and the whole Minecraft connection. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Well, I mean, I, I think it's great. I mean, you know, if they really open it up to all headsets, I mean, once again, they're opening up their user base to a larger uh, a larger user base. I mean, they're going to get a lot more sales of their hardware and their software by doing that because you're always going to have people that align themselves to that one headset or that one console, you know. By making it agnostic across the board where, you know, it doesn't matter if I have a Vive. It doesn't matter if I have a Oculus CV1. And, and I'll throw out the Dark Horse that I'm really excited about right now, the, the Razer HDK2. You know, if, if, they, if they really put, like, the OSVR open source stuff in there and open it up to Razer, you know, they're, they're not limiting their user base that way. Yep, I agree. I agree. I said the one thing I I thought instantly when I saw that, you know, it kind of reminded me. Obviously, the PlayStation Four is going to be coming out with the, you know, the PlayStation VR. Um, the big difference is if Ocular, if if Xbox manages to create a console that allows you to hook up your HTC Vive and your Oculus, or even possibly that OS VR, then they have now created the VR console. 
Okay, it's not the Xbox, it is now the new VR console because nobody in the world that cares nothing about, you know, PCs is going to say, hey, I want to I want to build a PC from scratch or I want to go buy one of those really expensive PCs. No, no, they're going to buy the VR console, the Xbox, it's VR compatible, and they're going to buy their VR headset because it all works and it's all easy to use. And that will become the mainstream thing. And, you know, the, the, the problem with PlayStation is that their, their console is going to go just with their headset. So only people with their console can play with their headset. You know, once again, kind of close. Xbox is saying that they want to open it up, and I believe we're going to see a brand new hardware machine. You know, it's it's not just that normal console anymore. It is now going to be the the VR console as long as they make that work, and it's possible. So I'm excited to I see think, what happens. Well, I think that's paramount, also. You know, to mass adoption of VR. I mean, so oh, you totally know, it makes uh, it easy for everyone. They don't have to worry about do I does my PC have the right specs or or hey, my mom uses her PC for work. She won't let me put my Vive on it or you know. No, you've got a console that runs your VR headset and does it perfectly and, and, and runs just that, you know, and now your, com your computer is, you know, freed up for other things. People are going to want that. Even myself, I'm going to want an Xbox VR machine in my house so I can use my PC for videos and rendering and photogrammetry and building things. And I don't want to have to have my PC hooked up all the time with my headset. Granted, granted, as a developer, I, I, I obviously want my PC hooked up with my headset for many reasons, but if it's easy enough to port over to an Xbox that's hooked up to the same network, which... Even Xbox One is hooked up to your computer in almost every way. I can imagine this other one will be as well. So um, transferring files, transferring videos, transferring everything would be so easy to do on a separate device, I, I believe. So. Well, I mean, so they're going to have uh, six tera flops and the equivalent of a Titan X, but by the time this thing releases, which is, is next year, but it's December next year, yeah, just, that's I'm never not going to want a PC away. with the latest and greatest, you know. It's so it launches then, but it's going to take a, what happens in a year or two. Is that going to be I, I, I hear power? you there. I, I hear you there. I, I, what I guess is in my mind, I'm thinking almost of the more refined version. Maybe the first one they pop out won't be perfect, but basically we're going to get to a point, and and people have been talking about this for a long time, but hardware is going to get to a point where we're, we're going to be at a standstill, where, you know, no matter how much you memory you throw in a machine, it's only going to need a certain amount to, to run those games that we create. Um, so, you know, at, at some point, our hardware is going to get to the point to where it's going to be all about designing. It's going to be all about the developers creating new stuff, not about having the latest and greatest, because it won't matter. Um, it, it'll be fast enough. So, And we're kind of getting there right now, if you guys haven't noticed, with the 1080. I mean, it's going to be a while before we actually hit maximum specs on that. So. So, I mean, it's out, and what Xbox is going to have in a year and a half, it's not even as good as that, or it's maybe on par. I'm talking about a year and a half. But, I mean, tra and, but, traditionally, but, go ahead, Kevin. No, I was just going to say, I, I from from my history with hearing things like that, I, I think their hardware specs are going to change quite a bit from now until it actually releases, and I'm hoping that that's going to increase. Okay. If, it, if it doesn't, you're going to be absolutely right with what you're saying. Nobody's going to buy it if it's old hardware, okay. so uh, I think it'll upgrade. I don't well, think it's actually going to change, and yeah. the reason being is because all of the all of the console platforms this generation, they're all using AMD technology. They're all using APUs. So my guess is that AMD is going to be developing an APU targeting six teraflops, and that's what we're going to get. And you know what, if that's the case, we will certainly see. I will be interested to see how it's adopted. All I know for sure, as we all know, is that there's going to be more VR in people's houses after this happens, and that's going to be really good for well, the whole the community. Well, PlayStation so. actually is going to be the first one to really hit oh. that. Yeah, yeah and they're going to have over a year of doing it. Yeah. And, and yeah, people, PlayStation, we'll they, they were killing it. They were killing it at E3 as well. They were having all kinds of releases that were coming out with their system, and, man, that's, it's, it's going to yeah, be hard. we talk all know. about that. Uh, towards the end of the the show will be all the PS VR stuff, which is pretty much my favorite stuff. But let's keep things going. What's up next, Bob? Uh, so next up, um, Microsoft also had a Minecraft announcement. So let's uh, let's watch let's watch that. All right, click. Maybe it'll work. I can't skip around, unfortunately. That's With not working. It, it's only a few minutes. It's fine. On 14 platforms, the Minecraft community is one of the biggest in gaming. Until now, Minecraft players haven't been able to easily share and connect with their friends 
unless they were on the same platform. Today, that all changes thanks to the power of Xbox Live. With Xbox Live, for the first time, players across iOS, Android, and Windows 10 can easily play together online and share the world with their friends. What? There you go, yeah. platform agnostic. Even with iOS? Yep. Even with iOS, dude. And Android, that makes... Yeah, and, and that really, I mean, not to overshow the video, I mean, that's going to be paramount to everything that we've been talking about is the cross-platform play. You know, I, we're going to get to a point where all VR games are going to support cross-platform. I guarantee it. They can play with you even when you're not I can't do all. With the introduction of Realms, you can do all. That's some kind of... Well, that's just it. Uh, they said Android and iOS, so do they mean the Pocket Edition will be allowed with the Windows 10 Edition? What? Yeah. That makes no sense. Welcome to my realm. I'm playing here on my iPad. Sax is on my Xbox Live friends list, so he can easily hop on straight from his Surface. Heading your way now, Lydia. Well, this pick is not going to make it any easier, is it? No. There you are, Sax. Here, catch. A diamond. Well, clearly, you did that just for the achievement. Yep, an Xbox Live achievement on an iPad. Oh, okay, that was weird. Okay, okay I get it. Going. So he's on a pad too. So they're both. No, he he's on a he's on a Windows machine. He's on a Microsoft. He's, he's on a Microsoft Surface. Right, but he must be playing a Pocket Edition version on his Surface. He's playing the Windows 10. Windows version. 10. All of this works with a new It's the same code base. We've got just the perfect it's, it's not the Java version. It's a newer one. Gotcha. Oh, Robot Carmack is so funny here. JC. like you're living and breathing in a Minecraft world. I've said that Minecraft was my grail for VR. It is really fantastic on the Gear VR. That I could be mm -hmm. The ability to spin around, take in everything, and have the freedom to explore an endless world is what I thought the core of VR yeah, that's was. something I didn't get to try. So Lydia, what do you have to show me in your realm? Oh, it's like great. Compared to like, I'm used to Minecraft. I use Minecraft so much. Is it going right, to really... Here we go. You, you kind of miss the positional... Man. You miss the positional tracking as you always do in a Gear VR, but uh, but man, it's it's on par, Gunter. It is fantastic. So uh, as disconnecting got back and the video's frozen for me, let me know if it's kind of at a good place to, to stop so we can yeah let you know when to stop. Yeah. No, this is really cool that they can do that. Uh, I mean, Minecraft. I've played quite a bit of that. This is a the, the actual you know way that it feels when you're playing in a legit version, such as even the mine you know the I'm sorry the Minecraft on the Gear VR. It, it's a whole lot different with how it actually plays. So. Alright, you can switch to your other other thing. Right on. Yeah, so other thoughts about Minecraft on Gear, Bob? You got any? Um, it's great for playing on like the train or when you're when you're traveling. That's that's kind of like I use it in the plane. The last time I I flew back from uh, the SUVR Expo, so um, yeah, it's great great for mobile. Yeah, I actually did that same thing uh, about uh, five days ago. I was uh, flying back from Pennsylvania, and I was sitting there going, "What am I going to play? Minecraft?" And I just popped on my Gear VR right there on the plane and just started building worlds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, what, so next, what? the next conference that um, that happened was the PC Gamer Show, and so at the PC Gamer Show, one of the new VR games announced was Killing Floor Incursion. So let's uh, let's check a video out for that. Yeah. Killing floor. So my little brother's favorite games. Oh, I can't see it. No. It's playing. Rejoin. It's it's playing. Oh, it just loaded for me. I think my internet's shit now.
look at that, man. It looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that that this is multiplayer because um well like the first the first that's kind of like what the what the first two or at least the second I played the second one with the Matt AKA Holotape, one of my fellow left-handed VR podcasters, and uh, we we played a bunch of that. So um, I'm looking forward to this one, and we'll probably both be getting that and playing it. Absolutely, man. That game looks really fun. Uh, the one thing I, I I notice when I look at it, I, I don't. I'm kind of put off by the hand models. I don't like that the hand models are ghostly hand models, unless I'm supposed to be a ghost in that game. I I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of like. I like to be really it, a presence for me is huge, uh, just for everything as far as you know my brain. I like I'm only a little kid when I play a game. I want to jump in and feel like I'm in that world and play, you know, make believe. And and when I look down and I see those ghost hands, it's like, uh, okay, I'm uh, I'm a poltergeist. So poltergeist shooting those guys. I mean, I don't know. It's just which my, we're gonna my see. Feeling. We see a lot of that with touch and 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 a lot of motion I think it's, controlled. I yeah. The, the I'm not you originally I mean, start with VR it. chat. We have full avatars, and and that's what I love. Yeah, right. and I mean, even with my own developments, I've created my hands. I, I I originally had them solid, and I didn't like that either. I made them uh, see through, so you could see them no matter what. But then again, my development project's a sandbox at the moment with what I'm playing with. I just like, for example, when I played a game, a chair in a room with HTC Vive. You're, you're a mental patient in hospital. You look down at your arms. You know, you're clearly a, a guy, and you can see your actual hospital tag on your arm and everything. And they've really embedded the arms into the character. Um, if you're in space, you know, you've got you know, spaceman gloves and things, you know, it's, I, I, I like having that to feel like I'm in that world. Um, and I don't know, it's just it's one of those things to see, to see the really, really nice, high quality textures all around to see the ghost hands puts me off a bit. That's just a personal I mean, it's possible thing. that it's just not finished yet. Very and possible. They, they Very could possible. have yeah, that's solid true. hands. We, we that's true. That's true. That's true. Absolutely right about that. Because yeah. this is an E3 trailer, so, you know, we'll, we'll you know, see what hopefully. We're Yep. Uh, what, do you guys do you guys care even? Do you, you, ghost hands doesn't matter to you. <laughs> uh, um, it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, in a lot of games. I'm, for I think it'd probably be better with gloves. Shattered by how cool it all is and how well. I was gonna say works. I get I get so I into get why people design to that way though. It, it does make some sense, but I prefer to be. Uh, right. I mean, that's, and to even talk about that, I've noticed like most of the Vive games you play, you've got controllers, you know, Vive controllers or some kind of a model, and you pick up, uh, you know, like when you pick up guns in Space Pirate Channel, you're, you've got no hands, you've just got guns, you know, so it's a whole different concept with the touch controllers, is they want you to have kind of hands for everything, so. I mean, uh, and I think for me, it's just the fact that I have hands, I don't care, I, I'm able to reach into virtual worlds now, and that is the, the the thing that makes the biggest difference. I don't care what my hands so look like. Function over form. Mm. Exactly. I you know, we're we're no longer peering through the window, guys. We are now reaching into the world. Your grandkids will laugh at you for that. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably they will. <laughs> oh my god, they're gonna laugh at us hard. <laughs> Shit we we've, we've done gone through in VR. No, they will have a documentary. About Gunter. Uh, so also during the PC Gamer Show, uh, Oculus's Anna Sweet came on stage to announce Super Hot is adding touch support. So let's uh, play a clip. Super from Hot. Super Hot. Or Chris Super would be hot. very happy. Shit's so hot. Boom. <laughs> Naughty. Love that. Well, I wonder how many times this is going to happen. And just noticed that computer was an Amiga. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> cool, awesome. Yeah, that, okay. Super Hot looks fun. I, it, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it. I wonder how much fun it'll be to play for hours and hours. I am interested. <laughs> oh my! Can I ask a question, Reality? Absolutely. Just in that example right there, when you picked up the gun, his hand completely disappeared. Do you find that a better solution than the ghost hands, or? Uh, and that right there, you know. Uh, 
in that situation, I mean, he has polygon hands and he's in a polygon world. If he were to pick up the gun and still have the polygon hand on it, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, I know with their development right there, they've got to delete the hands because then the arms won't, you know, they don't have a, a joint on the wrist. So uh, it would look really weird, at least for as far as I know that one. But I, I mean, yes, if, if I had ghost hands and, and you know. I guess I in generally I was just asking what's better, ghost hands or no hands? Yeah, I, I hear you there. And, and I think I would probably rather have no hand, or yeah, no hand than the ghost hand, just because, you know, everything in that game looks so realistic. And if I'm going to be scared, I need to feel like I'm there. And if I look up and I see that ghost hand, I'm really, I'm all about imagination, man. I don't feel scared if I see a scary guy in a ghost hand at the same time. Whereas if I just saw a knife, you know, <laughs> maybe that would be different, you know, so. I got you. Thanks. So later in the show, AMD CEO Lisa Su introed another VR backpack. This one is from Alienware, and according to Tech Radar, it was designed in conjunction with Zero Latency. They're out of Australia, kind of like the Void, but nowhere near as good. And uh, it is based off of the Alienware Alpha platform. One thing to note, the model was wearing an HTC Vive. Right, right. Backpacks. You, Anybody yeah, you, interested in a VR backpack? Is this something they want to have in their room to replace their cable? Uh, or what would you do with a VR backpack? Would you go outside with it? <laughs> well, Cosmic yeah. Effects, man, you just you, you hit some something right on the head there, though, with that little bit of uh, information you said. This is a computer backpack, right? It's basically a PC that you strap onto your back that you can now walk around and use which would have no, uh, you know, there's no reason to have it other than VR, right? Um, yep. But the big thing here is how would you hook up your Oculus to it? You cannot. Ah, you, cannot. you can only hook up an HTC Vive to it because the current way to track your Oculus requires a USB 3.0 to be plugged into your computer, which is not wireless. So at the moment, you can only use a Vive with these backpacks. These are a Vive-only backpack, man. Um, so, so what would preclude the backpack from having a USB 3.0? It could, but then you've all of a sudden now got a wire for your tracker, and your tracker needs to be sitting somewhere in your room, whereas the HTC Vive trackers don't oh, necessarily gotcha, have gotcha. to have a, a wire going all the way back to that computer. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Still, the problem is how much space are you really going to get with the Vive trackers? Is it enough um, that well, you want to buy a whole damn backpack computer for? I think that uh, potentially, potentially, if you can add more trackers than just two, then yes. Um, if you're sitting with just two, I think it would be a... Such uh, fringe case. You know, such yeah. fringe. I, I, the only real use case I see for that is if you're literally walking through a football field size with an OptiTrack system, you know. Yeah. I mean, it. you know, that. You know, who wouldn't want to walk through Skyrim, feel the wind on their face, and be, you know, completely free to walk wherever you want with no chaperone? But, I mean, how realistic is that in this generation? Right. So I think that the VR, ba the, the, the PC backpack thing, is kind of putting the cart before the horse, so to yeah. speak. Right, but yep. as, you know, the places like the void, places that are you know, the thing about the old laser tag, you walk in and you put on your laser equipment. Oh, yeah. You know, you're gonna ha you're gonna have these computer backpacks sitting on these stands in these public places. You know, these these actual yeah. places oh, that are making money, yeah. businesses. They're gonna love these things, and then they're gonna have an actual reason to use them. But then again, like we said, tracking yes. is gonna have to be wireless, and it's gonna have to be you know, much more than two trackers. Um, but I can say to your point, though, Gunter, just a little bit ago, you'd be surprised. Two trackers, I'm I'm sure they could get a 30 foot by 30 foot room easily tracked as long as you know, you've got the proper yeah. things set up because uh, you, you you can certainly do that with the with the Oculus. And, I need you know, a football you know, so. field though. I need a right, football field so when I'm in <laughs> VR chat, I can walk everywhere for the most part. You know what? I, I, what I'm what I'm wanting to do is I want to get a local hotel in town. I want to get their convention center space so I can go in there and, and yeah. hook up that. And I think I can. And and basically, we'll see if I can do that whole space without losing tracking. And if that works, then uh, we'll move to the football field afterward. <laughs> well, when you All get right. that set up, you just let me know. Absolutely. One yeah. thing to check if you're going to be setting up inside of a, a building like that is to make sure that there's no halogen lights, because halogen lights wreak hell on the Vive, on the, uh, right. the base stations. That's a that's a good good point right there, man. Halogen lights. I I know with uh when it comes to just any any direct light shining right into any tracker is probably not usually any kind of a good idea. Uh, but like for example, even like things like certain plasma TVs or you know microwaves can can affect tracking. Um, believe it or not. Uh, so like I've I've actually noticed 
and I don't know how this is affecting it, but when I use my microwave at the same time as I'm using tracking, I start to get a little bit of wobble. And the moment the microwave stops, my wobble stops. I can't explain that to you guys, but it's a true thing, and I've tested it. So little things can uh, can affect that. Um, also, I used to use the Razor Hydra for a long time, which is magnetic, right? And uh, if the plasma TV was on at the same time that my Razor Hydra was on, I had bad tracking. If I used certain USB cables, I had bad tracking. So, you know, there's a whole lot of things in the world when it comes to tracking and, and, and variables. And you really got to try a lot of different situations and talk to a lot of people that have used the same stuff um, to, to see what works. Um, but just ha t now that we're talking about this, I do want to say one quick thing. Um, I know the, the developers of Budget Cuts were talking about how they had a lot of problem with uh, tracking with the Oculus, and, and they were constantly using, uh, from what I've heard, one tracker on the ceiling pointing down and one tracker on the floor. Um, and, and I could completely see why that would be problematic for them, considering the way the Constellation system works. Um, I, for anybody that's going to be trying that stuff, Personally, two cameras on the ceiling pointing down are the best way to go right now. I've had so much success with that, and uh, I can see the floor, and I can see the top, you know the sky. So yeah, um, that's just, I think, the best way to do it at the moment. So. I definitely think we should take a moment here and welcome the oldest bro that's here with us tonight. Uh, I've never met you. Welcome to the show, oldest bro. Oh, hey. He's pulling a Caleb. I didn't, I didn't realize... Fan. I didn't realize he actually came here. And actually, what's funny, guys, is I recognize that uh, I recognize that tag, the oldest bro. Oh, Anytime I see you that tag, guy. yeah, he is my older brother. Um, he, <laughs> cool. yeah, he, he has actually uh, he's he's adopted this tag because for the longest time I've been trying to be on the internet and stuff, and he always jumps in and basically he's like, "Hey, everybody, I'm the older bro." Um, so I told him earlier that we were going to be on. Uh, apparently, he downloaded VR Chat and is in here. What's up, bro? I doubt he can talk, but. Um, or he probably doesn't know the the command to talk. Should we tell him? You, you yeah, you're gonna have to tell him. He doesn't. <laughs> uh, if it, you hold down the V is in VR. Oh shit! Hold down V is in VR and be like, yo, can you hear me? I'm the oh. I'm the better bro. I'm the smarter one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, hey, hey, brother, it's good. It's good to see you there. And uh, oh, on the yeah, Xbox, but, it's the left bumper. Uh, yeah, if you're holding the Xbox controller, left bumper. Or V on the keyboard, or you know, it was good seeing you, bro. Glad you're here. Smash all the keys, yeah. Or maybe he doesn't have a mic set up. And maybe that's very possible. You know what? Actually, he's got one of my mics, so he should. But hey, you know what? Yeah, that's cool. It's cool. I'm, I'm glad he's here. You know, uh, most of this, what's kind of funny, you know, we all are in VR, but I, I'm sure most of you guys know this uh, it, or feel this way. Maybe, maybe not. But you know, you can be in the VR so much, but your family and other people they might not know anything about it or even care about it. Um, my brother certainly does care about it, but uh, it wasn't until recently that he actually got to play it and try it out and kind of get involved with it. But I think I think at this moment, at this moment, he's hooked and wanting to buy one. So I think it's uh, it. he's looking to get you know, he's looking to get a vibe, I believe. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's move on to the next. brothers in VR chat right now. More brothers. <laughs> nice. Oh wow. That is funny. Uh, uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is something that VR gamer dude is passionate about. Story. Oh, yes. Something he's oh, yeah. looking forward to. He's maybe dressed for the occasion. Not only dressed for the occasion now, but dressed for the occasion on the last VR Spies podcast where you were equipped with your red suit. Um, the funny great. thing is, 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 actually, if you go back on my channel to the earliest videos that I ever did, I, I used to play Elite Dangerous sitting in my battle chair wearing the Starfleet uniform because I, I, I felt like I was in Star Trek, man. It, was yeah. just, it, it, it felt natural. So, yeah, roll, roll that beautiful bean footage, man, because I, I can't get enough of watching this trailer. Right on. Star Trek. Bob, you want to read the little headline and then we'll... Or do we play it first? There's, there's no headline for this one. Let's just go into it. It's just Star Trek. Everybody this, knows. This, this Star needs Trek no headline. VR. This needs nothing. Nope. Nope. If you would like to command your Starfleet in Star Trek, get this game. Uh, did they say a release date for this, guys? I didn't actually... Well, we'll have to watch the video. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> right, we're on the honor system. If anybody wets their uh, pants, you, you have to let us know. <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw this, a little tear came to my eye, and then I peed a little bit. So, so <laughs> you know. Yeah, you peed yourself a bit. Had nothing to do with the show. Well, it's because I'm old. I know. We're on a route to a secret testing facility. And are proceeding to our destination at maximum warp. 
I love they got his voice for that. That's so good. LeVar that is Mr. Oh, LeVar yeah. Borton, Jordy uh, LaForge, my friend. One of my favorites. He's been around for all my childhood. Reading Rainbow for the win. Of course, man. <laughs> well, you know, think about it. He was the OG, man. He had the VR headset. Yep. I know. That's actually when you... I was thinking about that. Well, like, everybody looks weird but him. He looks like he's supposed to be in that. That's the, the size of uh, that we want our headset. Right, right. Visor. Now, you know, and to me, just watching the actors play the game and get as excited as they did, it, it, it raised my level of excitement. Talking about excited playing it. Oh, and there's my celebrity crush. This is a social. Oh, is it? Oh God, yes. It, it bothers me that when they show the clip of the captain, his ear isn't properly put in the rift. Every time I see that, his ears just curled up in the Rift microphone, in the, in the headset. You know, it's, uh, come on, give people a break. You're, somebody should have helped him. Somebody should have helped him. Somebody should have helped him. Like, uh, if you go to Oculus Rift on Wikipedia, the girl in the picture is wearing it way wrong. Doing it wrong. Come here. Um, no, it's social. There's four, four player co-op experience. Yeah, right. and, and you know, the co-op is key in this because just like on the show, and, 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 and LeVar goes into this an extent in, in the interviews that he's done and in this clip, you have to work together. You, you can't just do it by yourself. You have to work with the other three members on that bridge crew in order to accomplish the mission, in order to win the battle. This game's going to make for a lot of good YouTube videos. No, oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. What, what, what I'm looking guys. forward to is uh, mixed reality type videos. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that. I, was, I, I can see us all getting Starfleet uniforms and doing mixed reality. <laughs> <in that>. <laughs> <laughs> should be. And where we all want to go. Line us up for war, please. No, what uh, would be really fun is obviously when we get to the point to where you've got one team playing against another team and we're doing these kind of things, you know, just, just easily, you know, with, with actual rooms built up and servers, so. Oh, well, I could fun. see that. You know, I could see like, you know, I would love to see expansions to this where you could. You could take on the persona of the Klingon. You could take them on the persona yeah. of the Romulans and, you know, have those, recreate those massive Starfleet battles, uh, you know. Can I be the Borg? <laughs> that would be freaking amazing, actually. Well, and there's so yeah. many games out there that want to do concepts like that, but the problem is getting an actual community that plays your game all the time, keeping those servers full where people can actually yeah. jump in and play a game. It's difficult to do, but Star Trek actually has a name that could do that. So uh, I'm excited. I hope that they do. They've got the, you know, they're one of the few people out there that could do that. So. Well, and you know, I mean, and, and a lot of people, some people may not know this, this year, um, on September 8th, actually, a matter, as a matter of fact, is my 10th wedding anniversary and the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Star Trek has been here for 50 years, guys. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's like yeah. ancient. Yeah, you know, that's crazy. Cool, you got uh, married like two weeks before I did. Yeah, Ten years yeah, ago. No. Yeah, um, we we actually picked September eighth as our our wedding day, and and you know, I in a strange way, I'm not gonna lie, that played into it. Uh, you know, being the original air date of Star Trek uh, in the '60s, and uh, oh man, yeah. you're a big nerd. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is, is my wife walked down the aisle to the theme from Voyager, and that <laughs> was actually that was actually her choice. <laughs> yeah. Was that Gunther that just said that he's a nerd? <laughs> Gun yeah, Gunter nerd. just called somebody else a nerd while wearing a headset in a room, talking to somebody else with a headset in a room. <laughs> it's it's endearing. I, I got married on Halloween. I'm a stupid nerd too, man. <laughs> and here I am calling you out with a headset in a room. <laughs> I'm a huge nerd. We're all. I, I say it. Uh, hey, I think we all wear it with pride. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What's up next, Bob? So in addition to Star Trek, Ubisoft had previously announced VR support for Just Dance, Trackmania Turbo, Werewolves Within, and Eagle Flight. At their E3 press conference, Ubisoft showed a trailer for Eagle Flight with multiplayer. So let's have a look. Yes. Oh, is this is this where Palmer gets schooled? No, Palmer actually <laughs> wins, but he gets he's a kind of a bad sport at the end. He wins. I was wondering... Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see. 
Doesn't this is just a trailer. It you don't see a lot of him like Dominator talking. There's not much really with him. Oh, this is no. just a trailer. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. He he takes out a couple of the other players at one point and like kind of like yeah yeah. Basically, you know. yeah, they Which they win right at the game. end. Right. Totally no, totally. Hell, it's exactly no, 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 hell no. Game. I loved it. I loved it. I loved seeing his like, his it, his passion come owned, out. Owned, motherfuckers. You know? just it was leaves. like. It was, you know, it was over, and the guy was trying to talk, and you hear Palmer in the background like, Yeah, yeah, we won, we won, in your face! <laughs> like, he was, like, totally in the developer's, like, face about it. It was great. Like, uh, it was obnoxious, but no, I, I liked it. I certainly, it makes me like it more. This one, this game, I'm sure I'll play quite a bit of it. I really like Capture the Flag games in general, so <laughs> this, this is going to be yeah. awesome. Gunter, man, Gunter, I could see us flying around just zapping people like crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, this is going to be epic. I can't wait. I hope they have high score boards. like these speed boosts in like the Eiffel Tower and these other areas just like, you know, not oh, yeah, yeah. Texas, but just like areas the of boost. The heat lift, you know, right? Hit those you gotta have a, a fan set up in front of you and turn it on high. Yeah. <laughs> I have to have I'm my not, wife I'm... like watching the screen with the fan and she like <laughs> controls it as, as like <laughs> dive down. Yes. Well, I can't. I can't remember the name of the uh, the uh, controller. Uh, there's the the other bird game where they actually like literally put you on the thing and you're flapping the wing. Birdly. Birdly. Birdly, Birdly, yeah, Birdly, yeah. I could imagine playing this with the the Birdly setup. That would be amazing. Oh, oh I hope right. they do that. That's a, a much better game, right? Much that would be cool for like a outer home entertainment uh, platform. Hmm. You know, like go to an arcade and play that. Yeah, I, I can see a lot of this transitioning over and kind of, you know, I think I think we've spoken about this on our podcast before, but, you know, VR is really through those types of peripherals and these types of games going to, in the short term, revitalize the arcade, man. I sure hope right. it comes back. I know the Void Tenors are going to take off for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going a couple weeks. Uh, so, so jealous. So jealous. Oh, going so back, I should say. Holy shit. Yeah, back to the void. Back we to totally, the void. We totally need to make a road trip to Utah, man. It's going to have to happen. It's going to have to happen. And uh, I do got one thing to say, kind of in the middle okay. of the game. Actually, and, and I've, I've, got to, I've got to actually head out here in just a moment. Sadly, I need to... I haven't eaten. And my, my wife got home from work just a little bit ago, so we need to, we need to actually hang out and, We're just and do the some best stuff. Part. I know, I know, and I feel really, really bad about it. I, I want to chill out with you more, so I'm, I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to have to come back and talk to you again some more. That's for sure. Um, and, Gunter, next time you decide to make a cross-country trip driving from Florida to California, you have to stop and see me, buddy, all right? Um, and the, I mean, the fact is, I, I plan on coming to Florida very soon, so, you know, you might see me there. <laughs> but awesome. uh, I hope so. I, I, I do want to shout out everybody in the audience that's still here real quick. We got we got Wiggles, Zipon, Gravity, Claw, Eridian, Lord Zone, Kirito, Six Marbles, 10,000 Polygons, Adam J, Conchu, VR Pill, Boba Fett, Violet, and Scott Nies. Scottness? Man, K Dog, Cosmic Specs. I mean, you guys, this, it's awesome that you guys are all here. here. Yeah, I really, really do. It's, it's good to see you guys. Every it's good to see a lot of familiar great. games. I, I I really really I Gunter I'm I'm just happy and honored to be able to sit at the table with you guys and just talk about this stuff right now. Um, unfortunately, yeah, real life does take over sometime, but uh, I I'm gonna certainly watch the rest of this once you post it on YouTube. I will watch the rest of the cast and see what I missed with you guys. Um, but I do want to at least say uh, right, get gonna, out of here, get out. Hey of here. hey I want to say I want to say I want to say I want to say. You just, you, I you'll, be here, you'll be here for an hour. You go now. You go now. <laughs> you better let me say it. If I don't say it, you're going to be real upset. You're going to, you, am, I, am I allowed to say it? All right. Lay, lay okay. it on us, man. All right. Gunter is going to be on the VR Spies podcast again here in the next couple of weeks whenever he gets the chance to do it. So hopefully you guys will be able to make it to our podcast when Gunter's on there. That's what I wanted to say. Ooh. We will. And I won't leave halfway through it and still play with my wife <laughs> that I see every day. Hey. I, I won't I, hey. burn. <laughs> uh, uh, if only we well, started an hour ago. And, and uh, yeah, it was we got started late because of somebody yeah. that had to get some funions. Um, hey, no, um, that wasn't. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sony PSVR is up now. Uh, Caleb, we got to go. I understand, but let's talk Sony because there's so much going on, and we are. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Yeah, Mike, <laughs> yeah, 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 coming on. Uh, take it away, Bob.
All right, so Sony, their, their press conference, you know, before I get started reading, their press conference was off the hook. They had a live but, orchestra playing, and it, it just what was I need so here. classy. I Man, it was, it, was, it was incredible. So, it was really cool. Sony, PSVR. Sony will be releasing the, Sony, the PSVR on October 13th. Wow. They so also close. announced... I know. They also announced 50 games by the end of the year, and they showed some new trailers. Mm. Um, and so first up is Farpoint, which is also the first yeah. PSVR game to support the new PSVR aim controller. Yeah, a little The gun. Farpoint developer Impulse Gear said on the PlayStation blog, quote, We founded Impulse Gear with one very important mission, to create virtual reality games that would live up to the expectation of you, the gamer. To do that, we worked closely with Sony to develop an entirely new way to play games with a PSVR aim controller. It offers the most realistic and precise way to control our game. With direct one-to-one -one tracking, you aim Farpoint just as you would in real life. How you hold and where you point the controller are directly matched to the game. This allows you to do things in Farpoint that are just not possible in standard FPS game. It also provides an unbelievable sense of presence in the virtual world. So let's play the clip. Yeah, man, we've been waiting for uh, uh, Delta 6 or some a gun. Give us a gun in VR. Damn straight, man. Farpoint, sick. Watch this, oh, this man. looks so good. So good. Oh my god. So we don't care about simulator sickness. Whatever. You don't like it, get it out. I assume that controller lined up match. You no, know, I bet this place isn't even on the star charts. See, they need to merge this with the Star Trek game and have away missions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be perfect. Well, ironically, the first the first next generation episode was Encounter at Farpoint. So. <laughs> wow. Imagine how big that is in VR. Don't pee yourself a little when that happens. Oh yeah. Doctor Moon, fuck yeah, come back, Doctor Moon. Wow, that looks incredible. Dude, that I mean, it just looks amazing. And you I'm know, gonna let the the trailers keep rolling, but keep talking. No, I was just gonna say. I mean, you know, think about it. You know. This is on a PlayStation. I mean, it blows my freaking mind. And so it makes this. me want to buy a PlayStation. Oh God, yes. It sort of yes. does. Suck. Resident Evil Seven. PlayStation. PlayStation <laughs> I've got a Rift and a Resident Evil Third. Uh, personally, I personally, I, personally, I want them all. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I've got I moved the back rip. home with my roommates, and he's got the PS4, and I'm hoping he'll buy the PSVR. And then and if Nintendo does then everything is complete. More PS? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. One of the other trailers that looked, it looked a lot like the Matrix in the beginning. unless I get the horror. I don't know. It's just something about a well-made trailer. I just love trailers. This one's great. Oh, well, hell yeah. It's Resident Evil. 
I mean, I usually don't like horror games, but I might get this one just because it's Resident Evil, and I've played a... I played a... Well, mo I've played most of, like, the older games. Oh, man, Resident Evil 1? So oh, good. dude, I... Oh, I, played I, all I, I still... All the, yeah. First I, I literally rented a PS... A PlayStation from Blockbuster so that I could play this game. Like, <laughs> kept it out for, like, multiple extra weeks. Like, I practically could have bought the damn console, you know, for what I paid <laughs> yeah. to rent it just to play the first Resident Evil. Fantastic. I did, I beat the Resident Evil 4, I liked that, it was the last Resident Evil that I played. Nah, me too. That was I really think good that's one. probably the last one the I game played too. It's very surprisingly good. <laughs> <laughs> I think they quit. Look at this. The zombies don't really make very good housekeepers. Dragging you. Oh. And you're in VR, dude. This. No, shit's gonna get real, real quick with this game. Yeah. Sonny says we don't give a fuck. I don't care yeah. about love commotion or you getting scared. Don't buy the game. Get Simple as that. Like grow a pair. Oh, it's so sick. Yeah. Or just don't play it. Yeah. Like we don't want to bum our gamers out and not give them a bunch of shit, a bunch of cool content that doesn't involve portaling everywhere or comfort mode. Yeah, you doesn't know, mean, and I think doesn't mean it doesn't have comfort mode. Resident Evil is such a big franchise, I mean, with all their movies and everything, a, a lot of, pretty much everybody knows the name. Well, I think Bob hit it on the head, you know, and I was going to comment on that. When you look at the launch lineup for PSVR, we're seeing a lot of familiar titles. I mean, we're seeing a lot of familiar canons here, and, and I think that in itself is going to be another one of those drivers of adoption for VR, is that people can finally play something that they, oh, I've always wanted to play Resident Evil in VR. Well, now you can't. Yeah, yeah, you're getting it now. This 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 conference, the PS, PlayStation Sony uh, conference was just like one after another, and we have more, which is crazy. Uh, nobody's heard it, like this isn't an existing IP, this is new, but. We've seen it oh. at a few of the other game conferences. This is a new trailer. It's, uh, yeah, Robinson, Robinson the Journey. The Journey, man. Yeah, we we actually had uh, Bastion Thun, the uh, the uh, community manager for Crytek, was our guest oh, yeah, on VR Spies weekend, Exposed. Yeah, yeah and, and mostly we talked about the climb, but we got into this a little bit when I kind of made the comment, "Where's my dinosaurs in the climb?" You know, well, yep, if you yep. played Back to Dinosaur Island 2, uh, the the very, very well done uh, D DK2 demo um, on demo. Steam, yeah. that is technically taken from this game. Sure, I mean, how could it not be? You see the crash on the ship, and you see some dinosaurs. It's sort of like the climb, because that's pretty much what you're... Very, very okay. similar, very similar. Now, Bastion did confirm to me, though, that this one will stay PSVR exclusive, unfortunately. This one will not be making its way to the PC. For me, it's like, uh, that's the world we live in. We've dealt with that in the past. I, 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 I fully expect that. I want everything to be that. available to me, but I can't. Yeah, especially yeah. a console, that's what <laughs> they do. That's, what are you doing? Exactly. I mean, that's. I fully expect that out of most of the PSVR content that it's going to stay on. PSVR. And this probably wouldn't get made without that situation, without the network and the connections that Sony has signed up, and the just the. We knew they were going to come out with amazing content. We knew that they had the ability to make that happen. And this week at E3 was when we found out it's all true. There's a bunch of big titles coming. They've been hiding, uh, not hiding, but just in stealth, waiting to. At least this awesome song. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, they, they, their launch lineup has truly solidified PSVR in the VR marketplace. Mm. I mean, oh, as yeah. being a, a true contender. Yeah. They're going to sell a lot of headsets. Yes, they are. Yeah. It's going to be another thing trying to get them. We'll see how that goes. What else we got, Bob? What's the next game we should take a look um, at? So we, st we still have more... Um, more Sony videos to go Star through. Wars. So, 
Yeah, the next one up is Star Wars. Yeah. X-Wing VR Mission. X-Wing VR Mission. Okay, now I had a guy at work today comment who I demoed this, and, and we were watching these trailers at work today, and he was like, well, now, wait a minute, didn't you already let me play this? <laughs> because he was thinking of the uh, Battle of Endor. Oh, yeah, yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's Graphics in this look a little bit better than yeah, Endor. Quite, quite a bit better than <laughs> Endor. <laughs> but. I tried this already. Can we move on? But, now I got to say, though, if you haven't played Endor, oh, man, you know, if you've got an Oculus, get the runtime wrapper that I wrote about on VR Spies, and you can play Endor, and Endor is amazing. Well, actually, I think Endor has been updated to 1.3 now, so... Oh, cool. But, yeah, you can fly an X-Wing, and it is an amazing experience. We also have uh, another big... IP announced at the conference uh, that there is a game coming. We don't get to see much. We very much a teaser. It's not very long. I am Batman. Could it be? Oh, you just yeah, Batman. Oh, sorry. It's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but Gunter, you gotta talk like this if you're Batman. Yeah. I'm not Batman. I don't want to be Batman. Somebody's that. Batman. Batman's when, been here many times. It's when Demucha shows up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is going to become a podcast with the show, and uh, we need to do a better job of trying to describe what we see on the screen. <laughs> uh, very limited. We're just seeing very, like, close-up shots of... No, we we've actually recently kind of we've kind of transitioned VR Spies Exposed over to uh, being an audio podcast on uh, iTunes now as well, and and we're kind of going through the same growing pains of like well when we show a clip we really need to kind of describe what we're seeing so that the uh, audio listeners can kind of join in. Oh, you've got somebody here, a friend guest. How's it going? It's nice to see you. Welcome to VR Chat and to Gunter's well, hello. Universe. Hello. How are you? I see you got the vibe. If you hold down the left trigger, that will be your talk button. Or if you don't mind, uh, we're going to continue on with the show. And uh, I don't know if you I think know what you stumbled into. It's a live talk show here every Tuesday. So I think it's reminiscent of Caleb from episode four. <laughs> yep. Are you streaming? We get that quite a bit. It's going to happen more and more as time goes on as well. So we've All right, got so Batman's one... coming, freaking Batman Arkham. Yeah. We didn't get to see any gameplay or really any, like, a story or what it's going to be, but, man, that's such a big, big news. Um, and along those lines, Final Fantasy uh, also this big is, news. This is this the is, VR this part of it. This is a huge announcement. Oh, man, I was so stoked about this. I mean, obviously I would much, much, much appreciate the Final Fantasy VII remake and being fully VR, but uh, yeah, any Final Fantasy, any way that I can get into that world and be in that world, I'm down with it. So I do need to say, like, this was not the trailer I intended to play. I found another clip that was just the VR stuff. This is a bit too long, and I can't fast forward here, unfortunately. Um... So this is this is the the PlayStation game. This is Final Fantasy 15. This is not what's in VR. And we have to wait a while till we actually get to the VR content. Um, but this pretty much starts to sum up the. This is what we're left with with the Sony VR announcement. Uh, yeah, this is the the final final uh, video. Final. They played Final Fantasy. It's final, final. A little yeah, trivia. I the last for, one was the Final Fantasy. Damn. Well, I was going to say a little trivia for people who don't know it. Do you know why it's called Final Fantasy? Well, I thought they they didn't want these things to connect. I forget. I feel like. Well, I no, 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 no. I mean, by the entire the entire series. How did it? Do you know how it got the name Final Fantasy? Let's poll the audience. Does anybody have that? Not a clue. Okay, well, basically, back in the day, they were a failing studio, 
And when Final Fantasy came out in Japan, That's it was right. going to be their last game. So they called it their Final Fantasy. Wow. Cool. Okay. A little useless Boy, trivia were they there. wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and thank God for that. Is this the VR? Yes. It's a porno. I, I can look at that in VR for a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. What's up? <laughs> you missed the boobies. <laughs> Heard Final Fantasy and porno? Uh. <laughs> you missed the boobies. <laughs> okay, so it's a teleport shooter, right? Is that what I'm seeing? I love how he's got the actual PSVR on. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one myself, actually. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, being that it's just an experience, not a game, I I, I just, I don't right. know. I'm kind of That's on the it. fence about it as well. It's one of those ones that I'd like to try before I buy. Yeah. yeah I mean, putting that excitement right at the end of... Oh, this is not what we're doing. Uh, putting that right at the end... Lydia Winters and Sax uh, uh, Hold on. Click the button. Click the right button. Is this one? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, putting at the end of after seeing all that awesome Final Fantasy 15 footage, and at first I was lost, like, is this the VR? Oh my god. You know, uh, what it is at the end is cool, it's, it, but I, yeah, I need to try that because a lot of what you're seeing there could be um, misconstrued, you know. I think you're going to be teleporting around uh, and just and shooting basically the beasties, um, which... We'll kind of the gist I get of it as well. You know, the, the only thing I would hope is is that they're kind of dipping their toe in the water to kind of see how it would work and, you know, and, and hopefully we will see a full Final Fantasy game in VR. That makes sense. So, uh, let's see, next after Sony, we're going to watch a few videos that were non press conference VR announcements during E3. So the first one is Sirius Sam VR, The Last Hope, which will be out this summer on Steam Early Access, both for the Vive and the Oculus Rift. So excited for this one, too. I, I have been playing Sirius Sam Seriously. for the better part of, like, 20... Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Looks to me like things just got serious. <laughs> This is going to be so awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, Caleb would be happy then. There's no ghost hands. Yes. Yeah. I'm listening, Caleb. No, you know, I mean, Serious Sam has always just been mental. I mean, and to, to mm -hmm. actually see it like you are there. All that shit running at you. I mean, full speed. Now, I have actually, yeah. um, I've got a video on my channel of Serious Sam 3 being played using Vorpix. And it is one of those titles oh, that I can you? tell you. Yeah. Serious Sam 3, if you take the time to tweak Vorpix right, it is one of the closest Vorpix experiences to native VR I have found yet. It, it just works brilliantly um, with the injection driver. So, you know, getting to actually see it natively now, it, it, it's, it's almost like a dream come true. Awesome. Well, that's coming. Uh, that's great. That was a surprise. What yeah. Got? Uh, next up is Wilson's Heart. Very excited for this one as well. Wow. Yeah. This is... I might be more excited about this. Not than anything, but this is... It's oh, it's so unique. It's the, yeah, so the 40s monster movie. And the only thing I'm worried about this one is, is you know, I mean, obviously... You do see your hands. You do see your hands. When it, it's the black and white. 
and I love the art style, but I'm worried that it's going to be God Ray Fest. It's, you know, just oh, man, that whole contrasting, that. yeah, because it's black and white, man. Star oh, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, Welcome right. to a world huh. where mystery surrounds you, well. and the characters are not who they seem. So that—that's my only intrepidation with this one. Of Robert Wilson, as you use new and exciting controls to interact with a suspenseful environment in an era that you are a part of. Well, I mean, the day that it comes out, if if, if it's got terrible God rays, we'll hear about it. Yeah. Now you'll hear you'll hear about it from me for sure. Alfred Molina as Bela Blasco. But it really does. I mean, it, it's almost like it's putting you in one of these cheesy old, you know, yeah, 1940s like horror Rosario movies. Dawson, Peter Weller are voices. Exactly. Alfred Molina's going to be great about you Don't some, You're trying to find your heart, you know. It's like you have some mechanical device there instead. I mean, wow. Just wow. Um, what else can we say about Wilson's art? I just, I, you know, like I said, I'm very, very taken by the art style. You know, ever since the DK1, there's been a few demos that have used that black and white motif, and, and it really translates well into VR. You know, um, obviously, like I said, my main cool. like I've never been in a black and white movie or anything. Like it's kind of like wow, I'm in a black and white world. That's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's, it's letting you experience a, another reality. You know, seeing what it's like to be totally colorblind. Now you're seeing yourself think in the that. mirror. You know, like you're in the mirror. You have full body, or like it's really uh -oh. playing on you. Being that person, being Wilson, that's what I think I'm most excited about. What are they doing there exactly? And I think that's actually any time a developer adds the mirror effect into any game or experience, it, it's awesome. It's, it's a huge, yeah, it huge presence enhancer. Yes. All right, we got a couple more out, uh, I think, to, to go through. Yep, so like next up is Rip Coil, which not too much is known about it yet. We do know that it's player versus player in a futuristic arena and you throw and catch a speeding rip coil disc. Uh, yeah, like uh, Tron. Disc, discs of Tron, maybe? Um, yeah. Basically. M maybe just a like little that. bit? A little bit? A touch title. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be... Um, which I'm surprised Tron, which that... I love, I can't, can't wait. I'm, I'm prepared for. Well, I'm surprised nobody's tapped that IP yet, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for a, a Tron VR game. I think this will fulfill that, no? I mean, well, it doesn't have the property and the art that we want, but the gameplay. And I think it'll eventually finally, come up because Disney's, Disney's doing uh, that stuff. Yeah. yeah, Disney's Disney's in there. Star Wars and the Disney Experience on Steam, which is pretty much rubbish except for the the uh, Jungle, Book, the Jungle Book experiences. Yeah, the yeah, I have yet, I have yet to check that out. I actually need to check that out, but I've heard the same thing. They're all thing. 360 heard... videos except for one. It's just a bunch of 360s, and most of them are red carpet 360s. So yeah, one right of them on, is red. Right um, I would say most of it's retarded. Yeah, well, it's it's not really good right now. I'd wait till there's a little bit more content in there. Is that what they're? I mean, I hope they're planning on doing that. But it just seemed like a way to get out there, get stuff. I like the load. They have a loading environment that's really cool. They yeah, look the loading, see, like Disney nice. or Star Wars or Marvel. But literally, it was one 360 movie in the Marvel section, and it was of the red carpet event. <laughs> it was like, why did you even mind? bother? That's exactly. Just terrible. But the, they should have um, just waited until they had some like real content for that before. The only thing in an engine was a caw, a snake in a jungle environment, and really that got me a little bit because of just the presence of Ka and how uh, how in, in this iteration she's um, really creepy and gets really close to you. It's pretty weird. Yeah, I just took my kids to see that at IMAX a couple of weeks ago, so, yeah, I can imagine how awesome that would be in VR. Yeah. Finally, we have a message from UK Rifter, who is part of the VR Spies team. 
you guys hang out a lot. You play lots of games with him. He couldn't oh, yeah, be man. here, but he, he made a little video, which I'm, I, I freaking love. So let's take a look. Hello there, Gunter and uh, Gunter's Universe Watchers. Um, uh, sorry, I can't be there tonight. It's because it's 3 a.m. Due to the spherical nature of the planet, I'm unfortunately on the other side. <laughs> I've got the question. What am I excited about with all this E3 stuff going on? Well, you know, obviously, Star Wars and Star Trek and, and uh, Fallout, all getting VR makeovers, which is absolutely fantastic. But of course, um, you know, so sometimes the little games get overlooked. And, and I purchased this one. This is, uh, it was in a stall at the back of E3. He told me about um, this. This is awesome. It, it's a tea drinking simulator. Um, apparently, <laughs> apparently VR. Oh, man. <laughs> Can't wait to get this. He always gets the good. Exclusive. How much? How much he's put in that tea besides, you know, besides him. <laughs> <laughs> so lifelike. Chris is wow, so awesome. So man. good. Delicious. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and as for the uh, VR HMD war. Can't we all just get oolong? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I UK that Rifter. Guy. That was awesome. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris is just a top-notch individual, man. And I, I, I feel so blessed to, every day to be able to work with people like Chris and Caleb and, and you know, Wayne and, and Greg. And I mean, you know, just everybody in the VR size. I mean, it, it, man, I'm so glad you showed that, Gunter. That, that just made my night. Oh, it made my night when I received it, dude. Uh, <laughs> so much fun. I watched it like four times already. <laughs> T Simulator. When is it coming out? When's the release date? Oh, the must get title. <laughs> All right, that's pretty much a show. VR Gamer Dude is VR Gamer Dude on Twitter as well as YouTube. Is there anything else people should know about? Uh, VRSpies.com, of course. I mean, there's so much great information there. All the whole team is writing content, putting, you know, one place to find all of your guys' YouTube videos and so much more. What else yeah, should people yeah. know? Well, you know, actually, yeah, there, there's something Chris and I were talking about. One thing we are doing with VR Spies, and I want to open this up to the community, is is, is we are nonprofit, obviously, so we can't pay anything, but we are looking to recruit agents for the VR Spies. So if you want to have a little bit larger voice in the VR community, give us a shout, man. We would love to see your writing style, and, you know, we would love to kind of get you in there and get you writing some articles. We have our first agent, VR Devil. He's doing great work for us right now. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if you've ever wanted to kind of just put yourself out there, we would love to, uh, you know, have you kind of join up with us, uh, you know, get some content out there. You know, if you have a YouTube channel, if you've started a YouTube channel, if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, if you just want to write something, hell, if you just want to talk or hang out, we're always here to listen. We, we have an open Skype chat, as most of you know. Um, and, and, you know, just come join us. You know, we, we are all authentic fans of VR, and, and we all really, really love what we're doing every day. So, you know, please, just, just come and join us with that. And obviously, uh, as Caleb alluded to, and I did not know you're coming back on, so I'm very excited about that. We do run the VR Spies Exposed podcast. Uh, that time has changed to be a little more UK-friendly, so we are now doing that um, – Sundays, uh, that would be 3 p.m. Uh, Central Time, my time, 9 p.m. UK time. So, you know, feel free to join us for the uh, VR Spies Exposed. Oh, what's great about that is two hours later, the VR Chat Meetup happens. Which is... That's true. So we can just, like, segue right from VR Spies right straight in. over to the meetup. And, and, and you know, you, you get double coverage that way. So Sundays is just the day of VR now. So. Sunday, Sunday, VR. Sunday, VR, Sunday, VR, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> and Bob, what's been going on with Left Handed VR Podcast? So we released an episode this past weekend with myself, Jason, and Reverend Kyle. And um, yeah, you can, you can go check that out. And hopefully we're going to do another episode soon about E3. So you'll get all our opinions 
on all the stuff that's going on E3, and not just VR stuff. We're going to talk about other games that we're interested in. That are there, 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 were also, there were some great non-VR games. Like, you know, one, oh, yeah. i got to throw it out there, just because I love those guys so much. Uh, if anybody didn't see it, uh, South Park's uh, Stick of Truth sequel, The Fractured Butthole. Uh, is coming out, and that looks amazing. <laughs> there are a few others, but but you got to you got to shout out to uh, Trey and Matt. You know, I mean, they've been working yeah. hard on superhero that superhero theme. But, uh, going from Lord yeah, of the superhero Rings. theme. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, they couldn't they couldn't do uh, they couldn't do Civil War, obviously. So Marvel took that. So they just said, well, we'll just call it Fractured Butthole. So. <laughs> Love it. That's so good. <laughs> good shout out. Uh, super cool. Uh, uh, anybody else here? Uh, I'm gonna run through a couple announcements, and I think that's it. Is there anything else to throw out there? Cool. I'm good, man. Uh, everybody that can hear me right now, make sure you get yourself to VR Chat on Sundays. That's the the biggest day for people hanging out here in VR Chat. Thirty or so people talking about their week, talking about VR being cool, checking out new rooms, new avatars that are being created every week, and we're like a family. We like bringing on new friends and family. Just come see us. It's a lot of fun, and that happens at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Follow me at Gunter's Universe, yay, or go to Gunter'sUniverse.com and subscribe to the newsletter. These are great ways to stay tuned and know when the next show is coming out, that kind of thing. Uh, big thanks to Reality Check VR. Thanks for being. Oh wait, he left. Still, thanks to Reality Check for being a, being able to be here, even though you had to check out early. <laughs> and big thanks to VR Gamer, dude. Man, it's so great to talk to you about video games. Dude, I'm just so stoked to be here, man. I'll, I'll anytime you ever want to fill a seat, brother, you just let me know. Right on. Uh, it's great having such good friends in VR. And thanks to the Gunters Universe team, Kenny on cams. Bob co-hosting. Right. Great job reading the news. Thank Thanks you, to all you. the patrons that are supporting me uh, every week, donating a little bit, a quarter, a dollar. Some people donate $5 a week. Really appreciate that. Go to patreon.com slash gunter if you want to throw me some change. Appreciate that. And thanks for everybody coming here in VR chat. Woo! It's been a great time. Right. Have Thank a great rest of your week. A lot of fun. And see you next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Cheers. And I would play exit music, but it works right now. Everybody get up and dance. Everybody get up and dance. And we hear music. Take it away, VR gamer dude. It's awkwardly silent right now. We're trying. Yeah, I know. It's so weird without the music. Dude, everybody, thanks so much for hanging. Skin you got there. Very cool. Very good looking skin. Uh, he just said you're hot, Bob. Oh, thanks.